Welcome. Welcome to BSCADA. So today we're going to be talking about our Status Enterprise and our Status Device Cloud products. Um, these products are used in a number of different vertical markets. BSCADA has been doing this, uh, these types of solutions for, for more than 10 years now. And Status Enterprise and Status Device Cloud both share uh, similar capabilities. Um, you can do data visualization on mobile devices and desktop computers. Uh, we have connectivity to thousands of different types of sensors and PLCs, web services, databases, all sorts of different things. Um, the values go out of range. You can get email or text message alerts uh, to let you know about what's happening within your system. There's a historian for archiving your data so that you can use that for compliance or you can use that for uh, generating reports and, and analytics. Uh, there's trends. We have uh, calculations in the system where you can use your own mathematics to generate new and interesting data. We have reports. And the system also does both monitoring and control. So not only can we monitor devices, if the devices support it, we can even control them from within the system. We have workflow engine within the software. And we can also um, do other things with the system too where we can integrate with other pieces of software because our system is very very open uh, and very very extensible and most importantly you can do all of this without having to write a line of code you don't need to go out and hire a whole army of expensive software engineers in order to build a solution so looking at status device cloud we have uh, status enterprise we have a number of different deployments of status enterprise uh, primarily within you know factory type settings uh, but also in, in other vertical markets as well. This is one of our largest deployments. If you're looking um, to buy some granite countertops from your local hardware store, it's quite possible that they were developed by Constantino, and it's quite possible that uh, it was this factory running uh, Status Enterprise that was used to build those. We have deployments within the Seoul Metropolitan Rapid Transit System in Seoul, South Korea. We have deployments in mining, uh, monitoring and controlling large pieces of equipment um, and various other vertical markets as well including transportation and agriculture petrochemical um, as well as doing emissions monitoring too so looking at our hosted solution status device cloud uh, status device cloud has a number of different deployments as well and these tend to be projects where devices are spread out over different geographical regions. This one is a project that was developed by BSCADA for Hamilton Engineering, um, where a number of different boilers, industrial boilers, are being mo mo monitored um, using Modbus TCP and the data flowing up into Status Device Cloud out in the web. Status Device Cloud tends to attract a lot more commercial type applications instead of heavy industrial. So we've got pilot projects and deployments on the system now that are uh, monitoring you know, various information from grocery stores, uh, restaurants. We've got projects running, you know, monitoring distilleries, uh, wells spread out over different geographic locations. And water filtration systems um, is another sample of, of how the, uh, the system can be used. And this is a popular one where OEMs are starting to look at creating new business models by um, adding data monitoring capabilities into their soft into their uh, mix of, of product offerings to their customers. Uh, network health, generators, all sorts of different things can be monitored with Status Enterprise and Status Device Cloud. So we have a set of software development tools for creating these applications. And those development tools don't know which version of Status they're talking to. They could be talking to Status Enterprise behind the firewall, or they could be talking to Status Device Cloud that's out on the web. So the beauty of this is if you are planning on developing these types of solutions, you only need to learn one set of tools. And even the projects can be moved between um, those two environments. At the core of Status, uh, whether it's Status Device Cloud or Status Enterprise, is a data model. And the way a data model works is um, live data comes into the system from your devices or even manually input and it goes to the model and then any client applications that are interested in that information they connect up to the model to get it. They're not connecting directly to the devices and all of the uh, complexity of how the data gets into the system is, is abstracted away. 
and your client applications are left with a nice, clean, organized structure. So this data model can be anything that you want. It could be motors, it could be pumps, it could be stores, it could be hotel rooms, it could be uh, you know pump stations. It's whatever you define in the system that you want those types and properties to be. So the system is customized for exactly how your business operates, exactly the types of things that you're monitoring. Now that data model, if you uh, start looking into your more sophisticated SCADA systems or if you do any research on IoT platform development, a data model is becoming increasingly uh, important and many people in many companies have realized that it's the best way of, of putting together uh, one of these systems. You have a much uh, fewer errors when you're, when you're building up these types of solutions. Uh, it helps to reduce complexity. It helps to uh, produce a system that's well-defined and well-documented, so it's much easier for people to understand. And your return on your investment over the long run of your system is going to be much higher with a system that has a data model in the center. So how do we create a model? Um, we have a piece of software called a model designer. And creating a model is actually fairly simple. The first thing you would do in this example, uh, we would come in and say we want to create a new type it would be a hotel room and then we would add some properties to that type we would say that we would like to have a temperature on that hotel room maybe a room ID uh, humidity and we can add other things too like alarms calculations we can set up if we would like the data to go into the historian uh, if the values are only read read only for um, or if they can be written to different things like that can be set up with your type once you have your type defined the next step in the process is you would create instances of those types. So these are virtual representations of the equipment that you have out in the real world. <clears throat> so in this example we've come in, we've defined our type, our room type, and we would come in now and say okay I want to create room 1, room 2, room 3, and the system will use that type template in order to create the room. So all of your properties, your settings, your default values, alarms, calculations, workflow, anything that you set up in the type is going to be automatically propagated and present when you create your asset, your virtual asset that you're going to be monitoring. And then the last step is we need to bring live data into the system. This is where we do data mapping. And Bscate has worked hard to produce a whole number of different types of drivers that will talk to different types of equipment with different protocols. So we can bring in data from Allen Bradley and P, uh, Siemens PLCs. We can bring in data from MQTT, which is a big IoT standard. Um, BACnet for industrial um, monitoring of buildings. And ODBC databases. If you have an ODBC database that you would like to bring information from the model, uh, you can do that. Excel spreadsheets. There's data from different types of sensor companies like Monit and BSCADA. Um, and we can even pull data from any kind of REST API. So if you wanted, for example, to put stock market information or maybe uh, weather information into your, into your model, you can do that using things like REST. And the data within uh, the model, it doesn't just flow from the devices to the model and then out to the client applications. Client applications can cause a change in the model which will also propagate back to the devices. So it can be uh, set up to be bi-directional as well for control. Once you've got your model built, then you want to create a graphics front end for your customers. And you want to do this without programming. If, if you're looking at an IoT platform and they say, we have a bunch of APIs, but you've got to build your client applications yourself, go find another system because it's going to be very time consuming, very expensive. You're going to have a long time picking out bugs. It's very risky. Um, you don't need to be doing that. So what we do in the Mimic Designer is we have a toolbox with hundreds of different types of controls on it. We have probably the best graphics designer out of any SCADA company or any IoT platform on the planet. Um, you drag these controls out onto the design surface. You pick a property in your model to associate with that graphic and then you just click publish. It's that simple and you've got screens with live data at that point. Those screens will open in either a Windows Thick Client, which is perfect for touch screens on a factory floor, uh, it's perfect for kiosks, it's perfect for digital signage, or if you have a full-blown desktop computer. Um, those screens will also open in any HTML5 device. 
So if you have an iPhone, iPad, Blackberry, um, or your desktop browsers from Mac, Linux, or, or Windows will all open those screens as long as they support HTML5, and most devices do today. That Mimic Designer can also be used for creating reports. Maybe I would like to generate a PDF document, a multi-page PDF document with a title page and, and several uh, pages within it uh, that is giving me information on my system. So any screen that you design in the Mimic Designer can also be used as a report. It can be used as a page within that multi-page PDF document. The, uh, the screens in the Mimic Designer, they can show real-time data, or they can also show historical data and statistical information, like averages and those types of things. Anything that you can design in the Mimic Designer can be a page in your, in your report. Those reports can be generated on demand. Uh, they could be generated on a fixed schedule, maybe every day at midnight you would like that report to be emailed to management, or they could be generated on an event. If a value goes out of range, you could set it up so that uh, a report would be generated so you can see uh, the state of that equipment when it started to fail within a report. Uh, we have trending within the software, so if you want to look at a trend uh, either real-time or historical data, you can do that. Within a mimic, you can use a trend within a report. Uh, you can pull the points off a trend and save them into a CSV file if you would like to do some analysis in Excel. There's scrub lines that you can add to a report, and there's dozens and dozens of properties on, on trends for configuring how they look, fonts, colors, all of those types of things. We have alarms and notifications in the software. So if a value goes out of range on a property in your, in your model, uh, you can get a text message or an email notification. And we also have an alarm control that you can set into your mimics. Uh, so with this alarm control, you can add comments and, and acknowledge your alarms. And all of the alarming information also goes into the historian so that it's been uh, tracked. There is workflow in the software. So if a value changes in the model, either manually or, or possibly from a device, uh, we can trip some workflow to execute. And workflow can do different things, like start another piece of software, send an email to you, for you. Uh, it can do some statistics. It can generate a report, and, and as well as a number of other things as well. For analytics, we have a calculation server. So we have a couple of hundred different calculations in the software now. Um, and the way a calculation works is fairly simple. You define uh, a calculation, or you can use you know, one of the calculations provided by BSCADA. And if you have a type in your model, you can use a few of the properties as input into the calculation. And the output of the calculation will go back out to another property in the model. That calculated value is just another value in the model, so it can be used in anything. It can be used in alarms, your reports. You can have it go into your historian, trends, workflow. It can participate in any of those types of things. So what BSCADA has found over time is, is very often, once you have this model set up with live data flowing into it, it becomes extremely valuable to an organization. And companies always want to connect to that model with, with other pieces of software or with custom applications that they develop in order to subscribe to value changes in the model or to actually write information to the model. Because the core of the OPC, uh, of the status system is an OPC server, um, you can use OPC Foundation libraries to connect to the model and, and get this information or write. So there's models in a whole number of different programming languages like C++ and Python and Java. We've also developed a .NET object model over top of OPC UA, which is very clean and very simple to use. So this is provided by BSCADA. It's part of your, part of your system. And you can also use REST. So if you have applications that use REST in order to get or set values within the model, you can, you can do that. So we've set up a website called skatauniversity.com where we have all of the product documentation available to you. We have a whole bunch of training videos as well. So you can go in and take a look at how do I set up a trend? How do I set up an alarm? Uh, how do I do a data mapping for, you know, for a particular type of device? How do I use the Mimic Designer? So there's all kinds of videos there to help you and show you how to, how to build systems. Um, there's brochures, there's uh, white papers and case studies as well. Um, quite often, companies will ask BSCADA to assist them. Um, any SCADA system is, is complex, regardless of which company you are working with. 
and bSCADA will quite often work with you to help develop your initial model and some initial screens and bring live data into the system. Um, we can then provide a little bit of training and turn the system over to your team and it helps to create a, a you know a better foundation for for a new deployment. Um, you've got support, you've got integration, you're getting best practices and we have a whole bunch of people on on staff that are ready to assist both in graphics design, model design, uh, even extending the software to to provide some custom functionality that it may not currently have that you're looking for. So that's it. Um, that's the overview of the system. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a sample application. So the sample application is using simulated data, but the purpose of it um, is to show primarily the capabilities of, of the types of things that you can do within the software without any programming. So what we've done over time is we've had some interns come into the company and they've built onto this solution using the Mimic Designer only. And we're going to take a look at uh, you know some of these screens to see that some of the types of things that are possible. And again, everything within that I've been showing you is applicable to both Status Enterprise and Status Device Cloud. So this example here is an um, example of a water treatment uh, type screens that are, are were done. Uh, we're going to drill down into this one. It's a little bit more sophisticated. This is more industrial. Uh, we have uh, a substation. In this example, we've got some gauges that are updating with some live data. We have a trend here. We have some data scrolling across the bottom of the screen um, that's updating as well. We can uh, drill down into the distribution bus. And here we've got a number of gauges. We have some bar charts. Uh, we have some bubble charts. So again, as the, as the data this flows into the model, the simulated data, the model is notifying this client application of how the model is changing and the graphics are updating accordingly in real time. Even these uh, bubbles, if you look at them closely, are growing, shrinking, and migrating around on screen as the data changes in the underlying model. I can click any one of these bubbles and drill down into it. And here I can see I've got a, uh, a trend running. I've got uh, four pens on this trend, another trend uh, on the left here. I can see I've got a report. So I can click that report button and it, it'll pull up a mimic and I can generate this mimic as a PDF document and automatically email it to somebody if I choose. Uh, going back I can go up to the top left here and I can see a, a pop-up window and I can see that I've got a calculated value. So this is where uh, we've used a calculation for uh, creating the overall equipment efficiency rating and that's been done by multiplying availability performance and quality together uh, in order to create that new value. So it's an excellent uh, example of how a calculation gets used in the system. Uh, going back, we'll look at uh, one more example here. We're going to go into this apartment complex. So this is more of an energy efficiency monitoring type solution. Uh, we do have some dilute solutions deployed like this. One that comes to mind is, is a university that's, that's doing this type of an application. And again, I've got a report that I could generate um, I could click building 3 and I can drill down into building 3 and get some more information on that building. I can see I've got an alarm indicator that went off here. So I can drill down and take a look at my alarms and I can see there's a, an energy index alarm that's gone off. So I could add some comments and I can acknowledge this alarm and, and again that would all go into uh, the historian. Drilling down into our uh, devices that we've got with this building. Um, we've got a HVAC unit and we have an air handling unit and we can drill down and take a look at that. So again within this solution there was no programming involved in order to put any of it together. If you're looking at an IoT platform that has APIs only you're looking at many many thousands and thousands of dollars to try to develop a client uh, application to connect up to that. Uh, that's going to look great and, and provide the kind of information that you're looking for. Um, using bSCADA you can do that with no programming at all, just with our Mimic Designer. So what I would like to do next is I would like to actually go and create a sample application for you in the system over the next uh, 10 minutes or so. So I have a second screen here and what I'm doing right now is I'm just stopping the, uh, the primary server 
and I'm deleting the database and I'm restarting it now. So now the system is sitting uh, pretty much exactly as it would be when you first uh, start it. So when you, if you're installing uh, Status Enterprise Local, uh, or if you're installing the development tools for Status Device Cloud, you're going to have this application launcher icon here on your desktop. And when you click it, it's going to bring up this little launcher application, and these are the handful of tools that you use most of the time in order to develop a solution. So the first program we're going to launch is the Model Designer, and we're going to connect to uh, Status. And uh, we've got a couple of types here in a new solution. So it's mostly empty. There's a, a types here for areas and sites and things like that. If you want to support multiple companies and multiple sites on Win System, you can use those. Um, going under Equipment, we're going to start by uh, creating a new type. And maybe we're going to create a pump. So here's our pump type. And um, everything within the system is a, uh, has inheritance. So if I go to the, the equipment type, um, I can add a new property for equipment. I could add maybe um, an asset tag. And any type of equipment that I create underneath equipment, um, pump for example, is going to inherit that asset tag property. So going to the pump, I'm going to add a couple of properties for our pump. Uh, they're going to be measurements. The data type is going to be a double. And uh, so with the pump, we may want to be interested in the current, about how much electricity that pump is, is drawing. Uh, we would be interested in the flow rate of that pump as well. And maybe we wanted to create a calculation. So for example, um, I've got the sum property. So um, looking at our values, looking at current, maybe I'm interested if that current starts to get too high, if the load starts to get too high, I would like to be, have an email notification. And I can set the thresholds uh, for that current as well, for the alarm levels. I could create a condition for current. So if the current goes over, say, uh, 100 units, then uh, that condition would become true. And I could use that condition in workflow, for starting workflow. So I'd like to create a calculation as well. I'd like to add flow rate and current together and put the result into this sum property. And we do that in the calculations tab. I'm going to pick uh, simple math and I'm going to pick the add method. And I'm going to tell the system that when a pump is created, I would like my calculation to be created. The input for adding the two numbers together will be the current and the uh, flow rate. And the output for the calculation is going to our sum property within our pump. So there, I've got a, a basic type has now been set up. And um, I'm going to add another type in here. This is a pump station. And types can be complex. Within that pump station, I could have a generator. I could have also, you know, possibly a collection of pumps within my pump station. So types can be complex. They can be multi-level. Multi um, maybe within this pump station, I'm going to have uh, five pumps within my pump station. So I've got that set up as well. So there's my model. Um, the next thing we need to do is create a virtual asset for our pump station. So coming into the assets, these are the real world things that we're monitoring. A type is just a template, right? So now I want to create a real pump or a real pump station. So I'm going to create a, uh, a pump station. I'm going to call it the Tampa pump station. And if I expand this out, I can see that I've got five different pumps here. I can certainly add or remove more pumps if I wanted to do that. Um, looking at pump one, I can see I've got my current, my alarm has been set up, my condition has been set up, my calculation, all my default values are here, my properties. So the type, uh, the pump type is used as a template for creating uh, these pumps. So next we want to bring live data into the system. So I'm going to connect to um, the data connector service and I'm going to create a new configuration. I'm going to call it pumps. And the first thing that we do is we want to pick the type of live data that's coming into the model. So this is where I could 
connect to different types of sensor companies, uh, OPC servers, PLCs, databases, REST, um, all sorts of different things. A very popular way of bringing device data into software is using OPC uh, DA. So I'm going to select OPC DA for, for bringing in some live data into the system. And I have a couple of servers of live data that are running on my network. I've got a Kepware server um, and I've also got a Graybox server that has some simulated data that I, I can use. So I've selected Graybox and uh, I click close and then I'm going to connect to uh, to our status server and to our, our data provider that we just set up. So clicking connect on the uh, left side is my model. So here's my pumps, there's pump one. On the right side is data from my OPC server. This is the uh, gray box simulation server that I just connected to. And here's the different values, live data that's available on that server. Now this piece of the system would change depending on what kind of live data I selected. It could be sensor information, it could be Modbus registers, it could be database information. Um, and this one here is, is value from OPC DA. So the next step is we want to map this live data to our model. So I'm going to pick the current property on the pump and I'm going to go to uh, my OPC tags for my live data and I'm going to right click and say add mapping. So what this has done is created a mapping between this piece of live data and this property in my model. They're now mapped together. So as the live data changes in the OPC DA server, the value will be updated within my model. So I did that for current and I can do the, uh, the same thing for the flow rate. So I'm going to save this configuration and next I'm going to go into a another application called a model browser. And this lets me walk through my model looking at all kinds of properties and, and do different things on my model. And um, I'm going to start by expanding out and taking a look at, at my uh, pump one. And I'm going to go down to the property table and say I would like to look at the property table for pump one. So here I can see I've got my current and my flow rate are being updated by the live data within my from my OPC DA server. I can see that my calculation is executing. If I go to trends, I might be interested in looking at the current for pump one. And I can do different things here with the trend. I can switch between real time or historical data. I can pull these data points off to a CSV file. Um, I can add additional pens from other devices and compare them side by side within this trend. So I've got different things that I can do here. Um, if I'm interested in history, so I can go to history and I can pull up the flow rate. So here's the values that have been going into the historian while we've been talking. Um, I can pull these values off to a CSV, I can ask for the data from the last eight hours, I could ask for data from yesterday, um, I can even ask for raw data, or if I'm asking for a large number of values, I could even get interpolated data um, off of this, this window. And we can also look at alarms. So I can go to uh, the alarming control and I can pull up the alarms on pump one and sure enough our current has generated an alarm. And we can acknowledge this alarm um, or we can uh, add a comment to it uh, and that will go into the historian. So great, we've got live data flowing into the model. Uh, and many companies actually just use this model browser as the, uh, the front end for their whole solution without creating graphics because it's so powerful. But we do want to create a front end. Uh, Biscata has the best graphics design experience in the industry. And we're going to launch our uh, Mimic Designer. We're going to connect up to Status Enterprise. There's the address of where Status Enterprise server is located. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new Mimic. So I click New. Now I can create a, uh, a couple of different types of mimics here. Um, I can create a regular mimic and I can also create a mimic template. And what a mimic template is is when you create a mimic for a type of thing. So I could create one mimic for a pump and I could use that mimic with every pump in my system. So I only have to do one screen and I can get complete reuse. And this is where the power of the model becomes available to us. Having that model well-defined allows us to start doing things like this where we start getting reuse within the software. But I'm just going to create a regular mimic right now. I'm going to call it test. 
and I'm going to go and drag a couple of controls out in the design surface and we have hundreds of different types of controls pie charts, bar charts, scatter charts, buttons, switches, um, LED displays all sorts of different types of specialty controls um, we've even got some some 3D controls within the, uh, the software too like things for uh, flow meters and, and tanks and those types of things so I'm going to go to uh, gauges and I'm going to drag out a, uh, a couple of gauges. So here's a, a radial gauge. Maybe I want to use a thermometer for measuring some, some stuff. And I'll pull up something a little bit different, like maybe an LED display. So what I want to do is bind these controls to my model. So I'm going to go back to the top left here and here's my model. Again, client applications always work with the model. They don't work with your raw device information. Uh, clients only work up against the model. So the way we bind these graphics to our model is we pick a property in my model and I pick a graphic and I double click on the property and that property is now bound to the graphic. And I can do the same thing with my flow rate and I can do the same thing with my sum property. So now those three properties are bound to those three graphics on pump one. So I can save this screen and I can click publish and now I've got a screen with live data uh, that's flowing into it. So the data is going from my OPC server, from my devices. It's going into the model, from the model out to the client application uh, where the values are getting updated. So let's create a second screen real fast. I'm going to call this screen test2 and uh, we're going to put down a, a couple more different controls. This one is signal strength. This one is battery level. And we're going to bind those up to uh, to our pump just for fun as well. So again, there's the uh, I'm going to bind the flow rate there, and I'm going to bind the current there. We have another group of controls for navigation. So one of the controls for navigation is a navigate back button. And every control within the model mimic designer has all different kinds of properties that you can use to set um, how that control looks and behaves border thicknesses, colors, font thicknesses, all of those types of things. So I'm going to save screen two and I'm going to go back to screen one and I'm going to grab another control. This is a navigation button and I'm going to tell that navigation button that when it's clicked, I'm going to go to the setup property, when it's clicked we would like it to go to screen two. So I'm going to save that and I'm going to do a test run and I'm going to open that up and there's my live data, there's my navigation button, I can click that and I can drill down into screen two and I can navigate back and forth uh, between those two screens. So this is a Windows uh, thick client that we're currently looking at. Uh, but we mentioned that these screens will also run in HTML5. So I'm just launching my uh, browser and I'm going to log into the system as administrator. And if I go to shared mimics where I saved my screens, there's screen uh, one and screen two. And I can pull that screen up in HTML5. And that screen will work just as well on a mobile device as it will on, on a desktop device. Um, and I can navigate back and forth between those two screens. If I go back to my model browser, I can even open up those screens within the model browser as well. They're now available to me in here too. I can navigate back and forth between them. So you saw when I navigated into uh, the, uh, the web browser that I had to log in and I had to navigate down to the screen that I want. Uh, maybe I would like to have the user automatically taken to a screen. So if I go back to the, the model designer um, under assets, you can see that I have users here. And I can create a new user. So here's Ron. And we can use different types of authentication for Ron. We can use um, LDAP, X509 certificates, Windows authentication, or regular username or password. And I can uh, go to Ron's settings, and I can specify which screen Ron is going to see when Ron logs into the system. I can say he's going to be taken directly to test. So going back to uh, the model browser, not the 
model browser. Going back to um, the web gateway, we're going to log in again, only this time we're going to log in as Ron. And Ron's going to go directly to his screen now. So that's it. That's an overview of Status Enterprise and Status Device Cloud. Everything that I've shown you here works identically for Status Enterprise and for Status Device Cloud. It's the same process for, for creating those types of solutions. Um, we're going to build a model, we're going to build assets, we're going to map live data, and we're going to build some great looking graphics and screens uh, to take a look at um, the information that, that, we've, uh, that we've created. So, um, if you have any questions, you can email us. We'd be very happy to answer them. If you would like us to set up a webinar like this exactly, we can certainly do that uh, for members of your group. What I've shown you here is the basics of the system. Um, the Status Enterprise and Status Device Cloud has been developed over a 10 year period. It's a very extensive system. Uh, these are the primary tabs for, for building a basic solution. There are much, much more uh, to the system, including workflow and security and, and, and messaging and other things that we haven't gone over. Uh, but they're there, they're ready for you. And again, um, if you're familiar with SCADA systems, we can give you a 60-day trial of Status Enterprise for you to try full-blown all of the features. Um, if you are not uh, familiar with SCADA systems and you're interested in Status Device Cloud, uh, we can set up a sample pilot project for you at a very minimal cost and get that up and running, train your team on it, and then let you take it over from there. Uh, system integrators, you're certainly welcome to uh, request a Status Device Cloud account for yourself. Uh, so that's it. That's the end of the webinar. Thank you very much for your time, and I hope you have a great day.